Shalom, shalom, shalom. I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University. I'll be your host this evening, Elder Lynn. My brothers and sisters, we'll be taking a look at a pretty interesting teaching on this evening. And the heading of this teaching, I create the fruits of the lips. I create the fruits of the lips. My brothers and sisters, as we very well know, our God, Jehovah, is creator of heaven and earth and all things therein. We clearly understand that the inheritance of our God is his people. He has placed in his people his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. He has given them the ability to discern those parables and to unlock the mysteries and the secrets that's locked here in scripture. In order for us to be a recipient of those treasures, we have to diligently be seeking after the Most High God. We have to be diligently seeking after him and his ways and him and his ways only. We can't try to serve two sides of the plumb line. It just will not work. So we understand that the Most High God has uh, created all things. And we have to understand that if we're to become a citizen into his kingdom, we have to have these attributes. We have to have these fruits that's of the seed of our God within the, the earth, which is us, okay? I want you to clearly understand that. So I hope you have your notebook, pad, ink, pen, and paper, and as always, most importantly, your Bible. And let's get started. And I like to get started at a section of this teaching I create. And we'll get started right here in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 7 and 8, and it's recorded. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Spirit of God, do all these things. Verse 8, drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation, exactly the point. And let righteousness spring up together. For thought, I, the Spirit of God, have created it. So we see, my brothers and sisters, that everything that is in the earth, our God, Jehovah, has created. There is nothing that was made that was made without him. I want you to clearly understand that. So from here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 65. And we're going to hit verses 17 and 18. And it's recorded. For remember, behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Exactly the point. So once this flesh has expired, my brothers and sisters, there will be no more remembrance of it. It's just like a loved one or a family member or friend that we have lost. We understand the grief that we, uh, that we experience, and all of us grieve differently. Neither one of us uh, grieves the same, because we all, we, some of us can take it very well, and some of us have a, a, a little bit more challenge uh, of acceptance when it comes to death. But we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, that this flesh is deemed to expire. We, we clearly understand that. See, if, if we understand that, then it's no shock to us. So if it's no shock to us, the thing that we have to do is be uh, uh, experience that and understand what's going on and continue on this journey, killing off that same flesh that we're uh, being a witness to that have since uh, expired, whether it be wife, husband, brother, sister, mother, father, grandparents, uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters, friends, or foes. It doesn't matter. We have to continually move forward to kill off this same flesh that a lot of us have trouble with uh, grieving over at the loss of, of a family member or friend. So these are the challenges that a lot of us face. So we have to continue to become strong in the spirit. See, if the more we become strong in the spirit, my brothers and sisters, 
the more easy it is, it is for us to be accepting of death. It's nothing to be afraid of because we're killing off this flesh now. We're hid in Christ. Are you with me? So if we're hid in Christ, that means we was baptized into what? His death. So if we're condemning this flesh, we have to constantly be doing those things that's of the spirit because now we walk in newness of life. I need you to stay with me. So we have to clearly understand those things that's recorded and continue to become strong in those things where we're weak. That's where we study and till our ground and receive our home daily. So if we're doing that diligently, then we're going to be successful with that, that particular uh, subject. We'll become stronger uh, in the loss of a loved one or a friend or a family member. We'll become strong in our belief and our trust in the Most High God. All of these things are so significant and important to us on this journey. Keep that in mind, okay? So let's reiterate these two texts again. Isaiah 65, verses 17 and 18. For behold, I create new heavens and, new, and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. Exactly the point for, behold, remember, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. Okay? So that concludes that section. So this, this uh, next section I would like to uh, take a look at is referred to as fruits of the lips. And we'll start this section off right here and uh, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18. And we're going to hit verse 20. And it's recorded. A man's belly, a man's heart, shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth for thought, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. So if we're doing those things that are diligent on this journey in terms of receiving our own daily and tilling our ground and learning those things that's of God and adding those things that we're learning unto our life, then this fruit that's contained in the seed, which is the spirit of our God, is we're going to achieve. Understand, if we're going to hold to the ways of God. See, we just can't be stagnant on this journey and have a belief and not put in any work. That's what Christians do. Followers of a Christ is, is a whole new different ball game. We have to put in work. We see the error of our ways. We are learning the error of our ways. And we're doing, uh, we're eliminating those things. We're condemning this flesh and uh, purging this tree. You know, as we read and study the word of our God, we are coming across these verses that's showing us things that we're doing unconsciously, unknowingly that we're doing. And every time we are, uh, uh, we're reminded of those things as we read and study the Word of God. We purge those things off. See, it, it it's, it's, it's becomes easier for us to be able to make a fringe of that, if providing we think that that's going to be a challenge for us in terms of forgetting. So we make a fringe of that. We make a fringe of this is something that's not pleasing to our God. So we need to continue to work on that to make sure that we're not going uh against this anymore or uh, we're not committing this uh doing this particular whatever that may may be see we have to continually conform into the ways of god conform into his image that's the purpose so once this flesh do expire then we should be in that image are you with me if providing we're doing our due diligence proverbs eighteen twenty. A man's heart should be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth for thought, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. From here, let's go to Proverbs chapter 12, and let's hit verse 14. And it's recorded. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense, the reward of a man's power shall be rendered unto him. So whatever that may be, that we have uh, 
uh, the things that we have done on this journey, whether good or bad, we're going to be judged for those things. Keep that in mind. So God is just to render that unto us and which and that which we have done. Keep that in mind. So it's a just it's a righteous judgment against uh, I, my, not only myself but others that are seeking a spot into His kingdom. Keep that in mind. From here, let's go to Proverbs chapter thirteen. And verse 2, and it's recorded. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but however the soul of the, of the transgressors shall eat violence. Exactly the point, just the total opposite. Because the, the ones that are learning of their own devices and following after the, imag the imaginations of their own heart, they're holding to the ways of the world. So that's contrary to the ways of God, as we very well know. So if we're to the left side of the plumb line, it's impossible for us to mix the two. It's either you to the left side or you to the right side. One side holds to the ways of life. One side holds to the ways of death. Are you with me? From here, let's go to Proverbs chapter 22. And let's hit verse 17 down through 21. And it's recorded. Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is pleasant thing, if providing thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips, which is, thy, is the key verse, that thy trust may be in the spirit of God. And I made known to thee this day, even to thee, have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth for thought that thou might have answered the words of truth to them that sinned unto thee? Exactly the point. So we see clearly, my brothers and sisters, it's a must that we conform into this, into the image of our God, because this word has to be within us. If this word is not in us, it's just like a body without a heart. You have absolutely 100% no life. Are you with me? See, we have to understand that all of these things are so important to us on this journey of learning the ways of, of, of our God. Because if we're learning things that's contrary to his way, it's going to bring death to us, my brothers and sisters. I mean, we, we can't avoid that. Because a lot of us are holding to the ways of these uh, buildings and we're listening to these men and not even uh, seeing if these things that they're saying are lining up with what's recorded in the word of our God. We have to be consistent on this journey and making sure that we're being fed those things that's of God. God feeds his own flock. Keep that in mind. So if we're doing our due diligence and we're coming in contact with these individuals in the wilderness, when we're striking up a conversation with them, just by them opening up their mouth, providing we're holding a conversation with these individuals speaking about the Most High God, just their speech alone will give them away, providing they're not following truth. Their actions will give them away because you'll be able to identify it. See, followers of, a, followers of Christ walk in a whole new different way. See, we're the children of the light and not of the darkness. So there's a complete separation there, and it's completely visible when, we're, uh, when we witness the things around us, even in our conversation, as we have just been speaking about a little earlier. So we have to represent our God in, the, in that in the ways in which we're being uh, we're being reared according to his word are you with me so we have to continue conforming to that image my brothers and sisters we can't forget that all right so from here let's go to Sirach to some Ecclesiasticus chapter 1 and we're going to hit verse 12 down through uh, 24. 
but we'll make a couple of stops along the way. So we'll start 12 down to 15. Sarat, 1, 12 through 15, as recorded. The desire of the Creator maketh a merry heart and giveth joy and gladness and a long life. Whoso feareth, desireth the Creator, it shall go well with him at the last, and he shall find favor in the day of his death. To desire the Creator is the beginning of wisdom, exactly the point. So if we're going to hold to his instruction, my brothers and sisters, it's important that we hold to his ways and his ways only. So again, those of us that have already been a recipient of his spirit and his truth, we know we can't go outside of that. We're all locked in into this agreement. Keep that in mind. And it was created with the faithful in the womb. She had built, who? Wisdom, an everlasting foundation with men, and she shall continue with their seed. So it's recorded in 15, she had built an everlasting foundation. So from here, let's take a look at Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 8. And let's look at verse 23. And it's recorded. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. So we clearly understand it's speaking about wisdom. Jehovah, the virtuous woman. Are you with me? We clearly understand that. So let's go back and we're going to reiterate Sirach 115. And it's recorded, she hath built an everlasting foundation with men, and she shall continue with their seed. So she's going to continue with their seed. So let's take a look at that. Let's go from here to Second Chronicles, chapter 20. And we're going to hit verse 20. And it's recorded. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness, of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, for thought. Believe in the Spirit of God, your guide, Yahweh. So shall ye be established, for thought. Believe, right here, his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Exactly the point. So his prophets are going to speak those truths, the fruits that he has created from the lips. Are you with me? So it's through and by those men that the Most High God said he would send from his heart. And we can find that information in Jeremiah 3.15. Let's, let's go to it. We'll come back. Just to make our point. Jeremiah chapter 3 and 15. And it's recorded. And I will give you pastors according to my own heart, which should feed you with knowledge and including understanding. Are you with me? So we see clearly that the Most High God has already planted this seed within his heritage. And it's important that this seed that was planted in us take root and starts to grow. Are you with me? And once it starts to go, grow, it says I create the fruits of the lips. Then we'll start to conform into that language. We'll start to understand it, uh, the language of our God and uh, understanding the mysteries and the secrets, using precepts to unlock the truth of God's word. Are you with me? From here, let's go to verse 21. And it's recorded. And when ye had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the spirit of God, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army, and to say, praise the spirit of God, for thought, for his mercy endureth forever. Are you with me? From here, let's go back to Sirach, chapter 1, and we'll hit verse 16 and 17. And it's recorded. To desire the Creator is fullness of wisdom, and filleth men with her fruits. She filleth all their house with things desirable, and the gardeners, are you with me? The gardeners, the storehouse, with her increase. Because the storehouse is what? Your heart the kingdom of God, where all of his treasures should be locked. Are you with me? In the kingdom, 
in the storehouse. We have to always make sure that there is meat in the storehouse because with that meat that's in the storehouse, we share that with our brothers and sisters that are poor. Those are the ones that are lacking knowledge of God's word. And we have to share this truth with our brothers and sisters, providing they have a willing heart to want to listen to what those truths are. Are you with me? And if they're willing to learn what those truths are, now we can give them more direction as to where they could receive more of that understanding. Are you with me? Sharing this truth of God's word that he has given unto us that brought life to us. And they can do the same for them, providing we're doing our due diligence to help our brothers and sisters along the way. So from here, let's read verse 17. We'll reiterate this text again. So Rock 117, she filled up all her, their house with things desirable and the gardeners with her increase. From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 112, and we'll hit verse 3, and it's recorded, Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Exactly the point. Because we see that the Most High God's seed that has been planted in us, which is the seed of Jehovah, our Creator, we have to become... Uh, conform to his image. Are you with me? We have to conform to his image. And he's going to create the fruits of the lips. He's going to give us those treasures that's locked here in his word and give us the understanding of those mysteries and secrets that we have to use precepts to get the understanding and to uh, learn and grow in, in, in the Most High God. Are you with me? From here, let's go back to Sirach, chapter 1. And we're going to hit verse 18 through 20. <clears throat> and it's recorded. The desire of the creator is a crown of wisdom. Exactly the point. Making peace and perfect health to flourish for thought, both which are the gifts of Yahweh. And, in it, and it enlargeth they are rejoicing that love him, that promise him. Wisdom reigneth down, skill and knowledge of understanding, standing and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. What? Wisdom. Are you with me? The root of wisdom is the desire of the creator, and the branches thereof are long life. Exactly the point. So let's take a look at something. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, and that's at verse 15, and it's recorded. For glorious is the fruit of good labors, and the root of wisdom shall never fall away, exactly the point. Why? Because it's too pure. It's the truth sent from the true God, the only true living God, the inherent power. The Most High God, the express image of who he is, are you with me? For glorious is the fruit of good labors, and the root of wisdom shall never fall away. From here, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, and let's hit verse 3, and it's recorded. For to know thee is perfect righteousness, yea, to know the, thy power is the root of immortality. That's clear, my brothers and sisters, because I create the fruits of the lips. This is the most high God's doing. And the fruits of the lips are in the heritage of his people. They're the ones that speak praises and glory and honor unto the king unto the glorious king, the, cru the ruler of heaven and earth. They confess these songs on this journey, conforming constantly into his image, holding fast to his ways only, and continuing on this journey, 
purging those things that are displeasing to him and adding those things to our lives that are pleasing. And as we constant being constant on this journey doing those things, we conform the more and more into his image. Are you with me? Let's reiterate this text again. Wisdom of Solomon 15 and 3. To know thee is perfect righteousness. Yea, to know the, thy power is the root of immortality. So let's go back to Sirach chapter 1. And we'll finish it on out from 21 to 24. And it's recorded. The desire of the creator driveth away sins. And where it is present, it turneth away wrath. Exactly the point. Because if that, if that seed has been planted in us, and we have killed off this flesh, and constantly holding to the ways of our God, enduring to the end, then we could, we could become successful and avoiding the wrath of our God. A furious man cannot be justified, for the sway of his fury shall be his destruction. Just the total opposite. Verse 23, a patient man will tear for a time, and afterward joy shall spring up unto him. Verse 24 is your key verse. He will hide his words for a time, and the lips, his doctrine of many, shall declare his wisdom. Exactly the point. So as we have to continue on this journey, my brothers and sisters, holding to the ways of God and conforming them to his image and constantly purging those things off that we're doing unconsciously and ridding ourselves of those things, passing these tests and trials and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and direct our path, to give us the, the, the advice and counsel that we need for making decisions and whatever uh, direction we have to make for ourselves to lead our families and to lead our loved ones. We have to uh, hold to the counsels of the Most High God and allow Him to direct our path. Are you with me? So from here, let's go to Isaiah <clears throat> chapter 57 and verse 19, hence the teaching. And it's recorded. I create the fruit of the lips for thought. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Spirit of God, for thought, and I will heal him. Are you with me? Because if we're speaking those truths that's placed in our lips and conforming us to his image, then he will heal us on this journey. But we have to hold to his ways. We can't be doing things on one side of the plumb line and trying to incorporate other things with the right side of the plumb line. It won't work, my brothers and sisters. We got to get out of that way of thinking. We have to make our election sure as to what side we're going to follow. Keep that in mind. From here, let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. And we're going to hit verse 15. And it's recorded. By him, therefore, for this reason, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to Yahweh continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name, to his way, exactly the point. Are you with me? Confessions unto our God. Acknowledging those things that we have done. Removing those things from our life and conforming to his image. Turn and doing the first works meant for repentance. Are you with me? This is what makes our God uh, pleased with us. But we have to hold to that way of living, my brothers and sisters. We have, we have given, we have, we're condemning this flesh constantly. All right? We, so we have to hold to our side of the agreement. See, if we have to hold to our side of the agreement, no matter how tough it gets for us, we have to always be mindful this is flesh that we're in. This flesh, it's temporary. We were placed in it so we can identify the sins that we have committed. So now that we can see those things, now we can avoid them. Now we're without excuse. Keep that in mind. Because now we can identify what sin is. It comes directly from the heart. 
And then it becomes a thought. Once it becomes a thought, if we are to act upon that, now it's iniquity. Why? Because we've acted upon that sin, upon that thought that we had. And it comes directly from the heart. So that's the reason that God looks upon the heart. That's, that's pivot. We'll come back. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 17 and one at verses 9 and 10. And let's record it. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Exactly the point. Who can know it? The Spirit of God. Verse 10. I, the Spirit of God, search up the heart. Exactly the point. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So we have to remove those things that could become sin towards our God. Because that's, it's a thought. It comes directly from the heart. Let's, let's pivot again. We'll, let's go to Matthew. Pull some information. Matthew chapter 15. And we're going to hit verse. <clears throat> we're going to hit verse uh, 18. And let's record it. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile a man. Exactly the point. Watch this, verse 19 and 20. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. So it's what's in your heart that's going to bring, bring about uh, Harm, my brother and sister, is going to bring about wrath, providing we go to these ways of doing things. The objective is to kill off this flesh. We have to kill it off. We can't, we can't, we can't serve two masters. Keep that in mind. I want you to stay with me. So let's go back to our teaching, Hebrews chapter 13, and we'll hit, reiterate verse 15, uh, 15 again. And it's recorded, by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to Yahweh continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his way. From here, let's go to Hosea, pour some information. <clears throat> Hosea chapter 14, and let's hit verse 2. And it's recorded, take with you words and turn to the spirit of God. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips. Are you with me? We have to continue to move forward on this journey, my brothers and sisters. From here, let's go to Psalms 119. <clears throat> Psalms 119 and 108. And it's recorded, except I beg thee the free will offering of my mouth, O Spirit of God, and teach me thy doctrines and teachings. Are you with me? We have to always hold to the ways of God and conforming into his image, learning of his ways constantly, removing those things and purging those things that we're finding out that we're constantly doing unawares. Those are the things, that's when we're conforming it to his image because now we're becoming, a, we're becoming fully awake out of the sleep that we're in. So we're constantly purging things off and cutting things away and using these things that uh, are a little difficult for us to use them as fringes and know when these things come about just to know how to avoid those landmines and those stumbling blocks that set before us. Satan is going to always be at us, my brothers and sisters. There is no let up. Even in our sleep, I've said it once before and I'll say it again here. Even in our sleep, it's just a constant, constant battle. And we're always on, 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 on the guard. We're always uh, in this battle. Because the flesh wants to do one thing and, and we have to hold to the ways of the Most High God. 
So it's a constant battle. There's 666 ways Satan has to get at us. And if he can't get you one way, he has 665 more other ways. And I can assure you, my brothers and sisters, he's going to exhaust every last one of those 666 ways before your flesh expire. I can guarantee it. Because he wants to take a lot of them with him. Keep that in mind. So this battle against the, 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 the spiritual warfare is real. I want you to keep that in mind. It doesn't get any realer than this. Some of us uh, are going, really going through some things. And we just have to continually hold to the ways of, of our God, my brothers and sisters. These are words of encouragement. So when we're reading and studying the word of God, we're given, constantly being given counsel and direction and advice and truth and understanding of what's recorded in the word of God. Helping us with those things that we struggle with. Helping us through grief and, and through decisions, whether it be medical or whatever that may be. But we have to hold to his ways. We can't allow these things of the world to get in our way. Keep in mind, these decisions that we're making, my brothers and sisters, we have to be mindful that we have to allow the Holy uh, Spirit of discipline to give us that counsel. He'll give us those things to say in that hour. Keep that in mind. So we have to rely 100% on him. I know it's tough, but we've placed ourselves in this position. So now if this is the only means of us getting back to the kingdom. This is what we have to go through. And we have to go through all of these thorns and thistles to get to the other side. That's the only way we can go. We can't, this ain't going to be no cakewalk. Keep that in mind, dude. You can get that out of your thinking. This is going to be a tough journey, my brothers and sisters. But keep one thing in mind. As we're on this journey, we placed ourselves in this position. Just because of our doings. Keep that in mind because of the decisions that we have made. So in order for us to get back uh, right with our God, this is how we have to conform. If it's not going to be God's way, I can assure you it will not be yours. Keep that in mind. So let's reiterate this text again. Psalms 119 and 108. Except I beseech thee the free will offerings of my mouth, O Spirit of God, and teach me thy judgments. From here, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 10. I'm going to hit verse 31. And it's recorded. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but however the fraud with tongue shall be cut out. So we clearly see, my brothers and sisters, that the Most High God has created the fruits of the lips. Anything that's of, uh, of a fraud with mouth is, is of that other seed. Keep that in mind. It's not of the seed of the Most High God, neither can it be. We have to keep keep that understanding because keep in mind there's two seeds. You have one uh, that's, let's go to it. Let's go to Luke. We'll pivot just for a moment. Let's go to Luke. <clears throat> Luke chapter 8 and verse 11. And it's recorded. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So we clearly know that's one seed. That's the seed that that has been planted in each and every last one of us. Now, that being said, is it going to germinate in each and every last one of us? No, because a lot of us are going to reject it. A lot of us are going to reject it. I, 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 let me share this with you. I, I remember growing up, and um, there used to be this guy named Earl. And he used to be the neighborhood drunk. And I mean, every time you saw Earl, he was drinking MD 2020. 
Every time you seen this guy, he had a bottle in his lips. And that being said, we had uh, uh, frequented go around to this, this store all the time because that's where we went to buy cigarettes. And nonetheless, but Earl, he would always have this bottle every time you saw him. And there was one day in particular, uh, uh, a gentleman gave Earl uh, uh, a cup of milk, just a small cup of milk. And keep in mind, this brother had been drinking for every bit probably more than 20 plus years. Because that's all he, he, he knew. Morning and night, every time you saw him, he had, he had a bottle with him. And this brother tried to give him a cup of milk, and he drank that cup of milk. He couldn't even get the whole cup down. He maybe got not even half of it. And the little that he did get down, he regurgitated that. Why? Because his body had come so immune to the wine, that's all it would accept. Everything else it would reject. I want you to clearly understand that. Everything else it would reject. That's how his body had come so immune to this drinking. And I mean his eyes was just red as fire. You could tell he had been doing this a long time. But I said that to say this. The seed has been planted in each and every last one of us that are Hebrew. Does that mean it's going to germinate? No. Because just as the story I just shared with you, a lot of us are going to reject the word of God. The same way his body rejected the milk. A lot of us are going to reject the word of God. Because we have become so used to this way of living in this carnal world that that's all we know. And that's an unfortunate thing because those that have become addicted to the left side of the plumb line clearly don't even know that they're asleep. And they have to awake out of that state of mind that they're in. Let's pivot again. Let's, let's go to Romans 12 and 2. And it's recorded. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We have to conform into another way of thinking, my brothers and sisters. And the only way we could do that, we have to awaken, awake out of this slumber that we're in. Because we, if we don't awake out of that slumber, then I can assure you, it's not going to go well with you when the flesh you in expire. Because you have been given every uh, opportunity of learning the ways of our God. And a lot of us is going to squander that chance away. You hear a lot of our people saying, well, I'm not going to follow the ways of God now, you know, because I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. That's an excuse. That's not a reason. That's an excuse. So we use these accusations as defense methods that we can only come up for ourselves because of what it is that we are doing. So we think that that solidifies us not to follow the ways of God, which in fact, the more you hold to that way of living, the more separate you become from God. So you go f a little bit further into the abyss. There comes a point where there is not going to be a return. Because once that flesh you in expire, every opportunity that you had been given has been exhausted at that point. And there will not, I want to repeat, there will not be a second opportunity of getting it right. Keep that in mind. Those of us that are holding to that way of thinking. Not right now. Okay? You hold to that. Let's go back to our teaching. And we'll reiterate Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 31. And it's recorded. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but however the fraud with tongue shall be cut off. Cut out, excuse me. From here, let's go to Psalms. 
Psalms 37 and verse 30. And it's recorded. The mouth of right the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of doctrines and teachings exactly the point. Are you with me? Exactly the point. Verse 31. The law of his God is in his heart. What thought? None of his steps shall slide. Conforming unto the image of our God. Holding to his ways and his ways alone. From here, let's go to Psalms 35. And we'll hit verse 28. Psalm 35 and 28, and it's recorded. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Are you with me? So my brothers and sisters, let's reiterate Isaiah. Isaiah 57 and verse 19. That's recorded. I create the fruit of the lips for thought, peace, peace, which we've just um, we have just completed uh, fruit of the lips. So we're going to look at peace. All right. So from here, in this section, let's go to Isaiah 26, and we're going to hit verses one through three. Three being your key texts. And as recorded, in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. For thought, we have a strong city. For thought, salvation will Yahweh appoint for walls and bulwarks, for protection and defense. Upon ye the gates, that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. Verse 3 is your key verse. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee exactly the point because this is our only means of, of of eternal life my brothers and sisters anything short of the most high god is death 100 percent. verse 4 trust ye in the spirit of god forever for in the spirit of god jehovah is everlasting strength are you with me holding to the ways of our God, always conforming into his image. From here, let's go to Isaiah 26 and 12. And it's recorded. Spirit of God, thou wilt ordain, I, Spirit of God, thou wilt ordain peace for us. For thou also has wrought all our works in us. Are you with me? From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 120. Let's hit verse 7. And it's recorded. Uh, excuse me, brothers and sisters. Psalms 120 and 7. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Are you with me? See, we, we need to understand, my brothers and sisters, that the word of God not only gives us life, it gives us counsel, it gives us advice, it gives us direction, and it gives us words of war. Keep that in mind. It gives us the sword that we could slice and dice those enemies that come towards our way with these stumbling blocks and with these snares and traps for us to fall in. Combating those things with the word of God. Bringing down strongholds and healing our brothers and sisters that's blind and of the palsy and that's sick and raising the dead, those of us that are without the spirit, 
without the light of our God. The Word of God does all of these things, my brothers and sisters, on this journey. So it's important that we hold to the ways of God. Are you with me? From here, let's go to Psalms 147. 147 and verse 14. And it's recorded. He maketh peace in thy borders, and it filleth thee with the finest of wheat. You see that? I mean, you, you, the God that we serve is has given us the very best of himself. I want you to clearly understand what I'm saying to you. Has clearly given the very best of himself. And a lot of us are going to reject that just for stupidity just for the ways and holding to the ways of the world that's going to sure to bring about death have absolutely no inheritance saved up or no wealth saved up for the kingdom absolutely nothing in the storehouse just as desolate as the the old west we have to wake up my brothers and sisters Eternal life is being offered to us. Don't throw that away. We have an opportunity. It's going to get rough for us. But we have to hold to the ways of God in order to receive eternal life. I want you to clearly understand that. So from here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 60, and we're going to hit verses 17 and 18, and it's recorded, for brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood brass, and for stones iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thine exactors righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders for thought. But however, thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. Are you with me? Because there is peace in Jehovah. There is life in Jehovah. There is understanding and wisdom in Jehovah. There is counsel, direction in Jehovah. Everything that we need on this journey to get back to the kingdom. But we have to endure to the end, my brothers and sisters. That's the point. We have to hold to his ways consistently, not wavering, not willing to turn back and go back to this way of living. We have to keep our focus and continue to move forward on this journey and holding to the ways of our God. From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 29 and verse 11. And it's recorded. The Spirit of God will give strength unto his people for thought. The Spirit of God will bless his people with peace if we hold to his way. But we have to be doing something, my brothers and sisters, we can't be doing those things we want to do. We have to do those things that's required of us. Are you with me? From here, let's go to Leviticus and pour some information. Leviticus chapter 26, and we'll hit verse six. And it's recorded. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. You see that? If we hold to his ways, my brothers and sisters, I create the fruits of the lips. The fruits of the lips is his wisdom, his doctrine, the fruits of the lips that his inheritance should be rendering unto him worship and praise, honor and glory, confessing those sins, 
uh, sins that we have committed against our God and the sins of our forefathers. Always. Always asking forgiveness. Because these are the things that we have done, my brothers and sisters. Look how long we have done these things. And God is truly long-suffering. We could have been done away with, oh my goodness, some time ago. But the Most High God saw us fit and to give us this opportunity of getting this right. Why would we give, be given this chance? A lot of us have been given this chance and have tasted the true word of God and has gone back as if we have not even learned what was in the word of God. Because of the ways of the world. Ain't but one way you could have turned away from that. Because you wasn't fit for the kingdom to begin with. Let's pivot just for a moment. We'll come back. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 13. And let's hit right down here at... Uh, right here at uh, 21, and it's recorded. Yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while exactly the point, just what we was talking about. For when tribulation or persecution arises, because of the word, by and by, he is offended. You see that? Because it, it wasn't, it, 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 didn't, it didn't germinate with him. always holding to the ways of the world, seeking those things that are right now. And it's those same things that you're seeking right now that's going to cause your death. Verse 22. He also that receiveth seed among thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Why? like to have it his way. He didn't want to hold to the ways of God, so he went back to the filth and the garbage that he had once done. Crawled right back up under the same rock he crawled from up under. Think about that for a moment. So what's under the rock? Absolutely darkness. 100%. Let's go back to our teaching. We'll reiterate verse uh, Leviticus 26 and verse 6 again. And it's recorded. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. From here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 54 and verse 13. And it's recorded. And all thy children shall be taught of the Spirit of God, and great shall be the peace of thy children. If providing, we hold to his way. But we have to hold to his way, my brothers and sisters. Keep that in mind. From here, let's go to, back to Psalms. 119. And 165. Oh, shucks. Oh, shoot. Give me a minute, my brothers and sisters. Excuse me, just for a second. Sorry about that, my brothers and sisters. Give me a minute and let me bring this up. Just a second here. Let's see if we can go back. Psalms 119 and 165 is where we're trying to get to. So just give me a moment and see if we get 
pull it up here. Nope, no problem. So Psalms 119 and 165, and it's recorded. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Exactly the point. Because it's through and by his peace, my brothers and sisters. It's through and by um, his doctrine that we are learning of our God. Holding to his ways, conforming to his image, always tilling the ground, receiving our own daily. This is how all of this works. So if we're incorporating all of these things that we're learning into our life and conforming to his image, we're going to be given peace. I want you to keep that in mind. From here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 32. Let's hit verse 17, and it's recorded. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, exactly the point, for thought, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. You see that? Holding to the ways of our God. I create the fruits of the lips. Are you with me? So my brothers and sisters, as we wind down this teaching, we'll hit this last section. And we'll reiterate Isaiah 57 and 19. And it's recorded, I create the fruit of the lips for thought, peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Spirit of God, for thought, and I will heal him. So we're going to look at heal, okay, which is the last section of this teaching. And we'll look. We'll start this section at Exodus 15, and we'll hit verse 26. And it's recorded. And said, if providing, thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Spirit of God, thy guide, Jehovah, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, his instructions, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Spirit of God that healeth thee. Are you with me? From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 41. And we'll hit verse 3 and 4. And it's recorded. The Spirit of God will strengthen him upon thy bed of languishing. Thou wilt Make all of his bed in his sickness. I said, Spirit of God, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul. Will thought, for I have sinned against thee. Are you with me? On his bed of languishing, suffering, his illness. So God will heal us, my brothers and sisters, if providing we rid ourselves of this world and allow the word of God to be that word of healing. It heals us from all of the infirmities that we have been, been trodden down with. We have to rid ourselves and kill off this flesh daily, conforming it to his image. This is how this works. Are you with me? From here, let's go to Psalms chapter 6 and verse 2. And it's recorded. Have mercy upon me, O Spirit of God, for thought, for I am weak. O Spirit of God, heal me, for thought, for my bones are vexed. From here, let's go to Hosea. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1. And it's recorded. Come and let us return unto the Spirit of God, for he hath torn. And he will heal us, exactly the point. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up, exactly the point. So we just have to continue on this journey, my brothers and sisters, conforming into his image. This is how all of this works, because the land that the seed has been planted in is us. Our bodies are from the ground, so we have to see that similitude. So that seed has to germinate, and that seed germinates, and it brings forth that which was contained in the seed which is those things that's of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance. All of these things are uh, what we need to bring forth on this journey. Are you with me? 
We have to keep these things in mind. From here, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm going ahead verse 39. And it's recorded. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive for thought, I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So we see that the Most High God is the creator of heaven and earth. He's the creator of all things. He has placed the seed and his inheritance in his people. So we have to do our due diligence, my brothers and sisters, at, upon the agreement that we have agreed with our God, with this contract, with this covenant that we have locked in with our God. We have committed unto his ways and his ways only. We have to conform into his image. There is no turning back because we know if, there is, if, there, if we are to turn back, we are sure to bring about death. I want you to clearly understand that. That's wrath is going to be kindled with our God. We don't want that. Because if there's a visitation, I can assure you, you will not see the next second. So, my brothers and sisters, we'll go to this last text, and it's located right here in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. And it's recorded. If provided my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways for thought, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. So my brothers and sisters, as we sleep, see clearly in this teaching, as the spirit of our God, I create the fruits of the lips. The fruits of the lips are the confessions that we must render unto our God. Those things that we have committed, confessing those things unto him and to uh, worship and to honor our God daily in prayer. All of these things, my brothers and sisters, is the fruits of our lips. We have to lift up our God constantly rejoicing in him and him only, giving him glory and honor and thanksgiving and praise because he is truly worthy. He is truly worthy. So we have to continue on this journey, my brothers and sisters, conforming into that image, bearing the fruit that brings, uh, that's contained in the seed that has been planted in us, which is the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding of, of our God, that he is given of himself to us. So we have to conform it to that image. We have to eat the whole roll, my brothers and sisters. Not some of it. We have to eat the whole roll. Despite the things we have to go through, despite uh, the taste that we, we may have in our mouth. But we have to eat the whole roll. Are you with me? So always... Hold to, to the Most High God, my brothers and sisters. Turn not away from him. Despite the decisions we have to make, despite the way that we have to go, no matter what it is that we're going through, we have to put him first and allow him to lead and direct our path. And in that season, he'll give us what to say. He'll direct our path and give us that counsel and advice. Are you with me? So as always, till the ground from which you've come, Receive your alma daily and never, never let anyone pull you away from what you know to be true in God's word. So until we meet again, I say to each and every last one of you, Shalom.